I, I really wanted you to speak about this. I loved your talk that you did. Uh, no, but this is linked to what I wanted to speak about in the talk. No, no, I'll, I'll come back to this. But you spoke about... Um, I'm you, the pop, pair of puppets. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. But the, I think it's Isna or Ikna or whatever, the, the, the talk that you gave about the Muslim question, that people are so uncomfortable with the Muslim ideas because we cause them anxiety in the fragility of their own worldview and their own understanding. Yeah, so the Could very you? good book I really recommend, it's called On the Muslim Question by Ann Norton. Ann Norton. She's a, she's a wonderful author. She's a political kind of political philosophy, political philosopher, a history, sort of political historian. Um, she, she herself is, you know, she's a committed liberal. Um, what she sees in the way that Muslims and Islam are treated in the West, in the West is es essentially a failure, a consistent failure of liberal ideals. And what she talks about, she titles her book uh, as an intentional echo of Marx's on the Jewish question. Because what she shows, and what has, has long been discussed in the case of Jews, and, and she shows in the case of Muslims, is that minorities, Jews and then Muslims, are, they cause anxiety in the Western tradition, especially Western Europe, because a Western Europe does not know how to deal with difference. It cannot actually deal with internal difference. And um, Muslim, Jews and Muslims remind Westerners of their own failures to deal with difference. Uh, and what you often see is that the things that Western sort of Islamophobia or anti-Semitism hates about Jews or Muslims are the very things that the West is itself guilty of. It's, you know, Muslims oppress minorities. Okay, how many genocides did Muslims engage in? What kind of racial anti-Semitism did Muslims engage in? None. I mean, statistically zero. You guys know Muhammad Assad, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was his religion before he became Muslim? He was a Jew. Do you have any problem with Muhammad Assad? No. 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 Uh, Kaab, uh, Abdullah bin Salam, Jew. companion of the Prophet. What religion is him before he became, was he before he became Muslim? He was a Jew. Jewish. Did they have any problem with him? No. Right? No one has, no, no one, Muslims don't have problems with Jews. Muslims have problems with Zionism. Okay. Uh, there's a great essay by David Wasserstein, who's a professor at uh, Vanderbilt University, How Islam Saved the Jews. Medi medieval Judaism flourished and survived under Muslim rule. And by the way, was Jewish law was highly influenced by, Mus by Islamic law. Maimonides. Yeah, Jewish, law, Jewish theology <coughs> was strongly influenced by Islamic theology. And they were in dialogue with one another, and both influenced by the Greco-Roman traditions. So, uh, who, who, who is it that, which tradition is it that first expelled all Jews and Muslims, then expelled anybody who was even descended from Jews and Muslims, even if those people had converted to Catholicism? Spanish. Yeah, 1525 expels all the Moors, all the Muslims from, except if you convert. You have to convert, okay, you can stay. 1609 expels all their descendants, even if they converted to Christianity. That is racial anti-Semitism, people. This does, uh, simply does not exist. I can think of one instance in my mind, one instance where something like this happened to a person in Islamic history. Uh, there may be more examples. I only know of one. Uh, who is, I mean, within... Not just in the 20th century has there been genocide of minorities in uh, Europe, in Western Europe, but within my lifetime, there is genocide of, of, non, of, of the other within Europe. Bosnian Muslims, to which Western Europe had exactly jack squat response. I mean, this is what, again, I don't mean to wave the American flag here. <laughs> But who went in and, and saved Bosnian Muslims? Right? I mean, think about that. The people who sit around talking about never again, it happened right in front of their faces. So the, um, who is it who, uh, Muslims, they don't allow freedom of speech. They don't allow freedom of speech. They got problems with it. They just don't get it. Je suis Charlie. Let's all walk around with pens to show we believe in freedom of speech. Who do they defend? 
Whose right to freedom of speech do they defend? Do they defend Muslims' right to freedom of speech? No. When a Muslim comes out and says, I think, I think homosexuality is a sin, or I think the Israeli government is oppressive and, and, just, and deprives Palestinians of their rights, are those people's, do they f face consequences for those statements? Oh, yeah. Right? By the way, it's not just... And this is, Ann Norton goes into this at length. It's not just your freedom of speech, it's your freedom to remain silent. Hey, Muslim, you're going to come on TV. I want you to condemn, you, you got to condemn, right? You got to <laughs> condemn a bunch of stuff. First, I want you to condemn ISIS. Then I want you to condemn Hamas. Then I want you, here's a list of things I want you to condemn. Do we ask, do, do, do regular Europeans or white people in, in the United States have to condemn things? No. By the way, your freedom of speech is also your freedom not to speak. So the people whose alleged freedom of speech is under attack and needs to be defended are the powerful majority. And the people whose we don't talk about as having freedom of speech and who we f happily uh, deprive of or restrict in their speech rights are the mi em embattled, besieged minorities, poor, uh, underserved, underrepresented Muslim minorities in European countries or in the United States. So that is like the... You can see whose rights are being protected. When do we have the march about with pens? Do we talk about when Muslims are not allowed to speak? We do it with this when it's white people who are not allowed to speak, or when white people are threatened in their <coughs> rights to speak. So this is the, 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 these are the points that Ann Norton makes. I really recommend reading this book. It's excellent. It's very readable. It's maybe you know, getting on 10 years old now, but it's a superb book on the Muslim question.